Hello and welcome to The Busy Mom Show, the show to help mums and their families thrive. I'm your host, Dr Leonora Rhodes. Today I'm going to be talking to Jolene Moody about how to have a career as a professional speaker. Before I introduce you to, jo- to Jolene, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and about the show. I am a health and happiness coach, working mainly with women and mothers. And I'm also author of Beyond Soccer Mom, Strategies for a Fabulous Balanced Life, a comprehensive guide to creating your dream life. The next natural step for me was the Busy Mum Show, where I bring you interviews with all sorts of experts and topics relating to being a mother and to having a fabulous life. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Jolene Moody. I'm going to read you a brief bio because her bio is very impressive and very long. So here's the short version. Jolene is a former Central New York television reporter and anchor turned comedic speaker, comedic speaker, playwright and author. And she has two recent eBooks called How to Find and Create Paid Speaking Opportunities and How to Write a Talk That Sells. She's also a certified coach with Robbins Madonna's Center for Strategic Intervention, and she's a sought-after keynote speaker for those who want to uncover and discover their voice and what it takes to be heard around the world. So welcome, Jolene. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. So you have an impressive resume. Um, tell us how you, your career has developed from being a TV anchor um, through to what you do now. Yeah, so I was a television reporter and a fill-in anchor. So I was the girl that was out on the streets gathering stories. I live in central New York, not New York City. A lot of people think that they're synonymous and they're not. Um, and I wasn't happy. You and I were just chatting about that earlier. There's a certain joy that wasn't there. I had a great job. But um, I was working long hours, and what I was doing, I wasn't fully in love with. So I wanted to make a change. And it sounds silly, but the way that change happened is I listened to New Thought Authors. I listened to the Wayne Dyers, God rest his soul, and um, all of those voices that helped shape me. And that's when I decided I wanted to be a speaker. So it was in my living room. Yeah. Or it was still in news. And I thought, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to figure it out and do it. Yeah. So it was making that decision and stepping into it. You know, it's funny you say that because I think <clears throat> there's a few different ways people create a big change in their life. It can either be through a crisis happening in their life. And sadly, for many people, that's the way that they change. Yeah. Um, sometimes it can be watching a crisis happen to somebody else and they think, oh my goodness, if I don't do something now, that's going to be me. And the third way is through personal development. And it's a real gift if you can create that change through personal development without having to go through the crisis. So it's good to hear you, uh, you had your um, aha moment through personal development. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. For yeah. years, I've, I've listened to it. it. It was an aha moment, but it was an aha moment that was years in the making. Yeah. yeah. You know, to get to the point where I said, okay, <clears> I'm, I gotta let go. Yes, absolutely. Um, So you're a professional keynote speaker, um, but you also speak at conferences where you don't get paid. So tell us what's the difference, because I know there's going to be a lot of people who are interested in breaking into a speaking career watching this. So what's the difference between those two types of speaking? So in a word, very general, there is keynote speaking and then there is platform speaking or conference speaking. Keynote speaking is where an organization or college brings you in and pays you a lump sum of money, $2,000, $3,000, $7,000. And then you say goodbye and you do your talk. You stay over overnight, you have a good time. Mm -hmm. Conference speaking is when you don't get paid. This is general because these do cross and have. But for the most part, you don't get paid and you are either a breakout session speaker at a large event or some business conference somewhere. You know, you either attend it or um, you are asked to speak, rather. You yeah. have a vendor table and people can see you there. Those can be very lucrative if you know and learn how to sell your product. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and I guess by, by product, that can be a whole range of, of different things. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to have a dog that will probably sell alone. <laughs> 
apologies, a school bus is going by. <laughs> we but, often um, have dogs or babies on the show in the background, so don't worry. <laughs> I have two dogs. One okay. is downstairs. You know, I usually put him downstairs before I do this, and I didn't. I forgot. <laughs> when I was a puppy, I used to, I have to keep him here to keep him quiet. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <clears throat> but to answer your question, all yeah. of those. Yeah. Um, the larger the item, so a coaching package, for example, the higher the price tag, obviously, the more money you're going to make. Yes, absolutely. And we first met at one of those conferences, and, um, and I actually bought a course from you on how to... Um, how to become a professional speaker and how to close the deal, which I was terribly bad at. <laughs> so, um, so it's funny. Yes, that's where we first met. So what's your dog yes. called? This is Bosley. Oh, uh, Bosley. He's a long-haired doxy. I, I, he's <laughs> like my child. Yeah. So yeah, the course you bought, <clears throat> it's called Convert the Room. Yes. And at the time, I was doing business coaching, and I was selling coaching packages between seven thousand and fifteen thousand. Yeah. So there are coaches out there that teach you how to get to that point, you know. And that, and I don't do that kind of coaching anymore. I do. I focus primarily on showing people how to find or create their own speaking opportunities because you can make money as a keynote, but you can make money in those rooms too. You just have to be brave enough. Mm -hmm to sell yourself at that price and believe in yourself. So Jolene, you recently published two eBooks that help um, aspiring speakers find paid speaking opportunities. Why did you choose that route? Because as you were just saying, you used to be a business coach. Yeah, I love working with people. So I think when, if, if people don't understand the industry, business coaching was the whole package. I was teaching them how to find and create opportunities and then teaching them how to sell. Um, but it's a lot of information and my heart is really with just teaching the speaking aspect of it How to improve them as speakers where they can find these opportunities then it's up to them. Yeah, you know um, I think as you grow in business and this is what I discovered I started my business in 2010 as a coach and a speaker So I'm still learning how to hone my business and really niche the people that I enjoy working with its growth Yes so, um, so I don't have those high-end coaching packages anymore. They're much smaller. They're more affordable, I think, because business coaching is, it can be very expensive. Mm, yes. And again, it just focuses solely on either showing them how to find or create them or show, helping them become a more confident speaker. It's making them get out there and just kick butt doing it. Yes. Whatever they that's what I do. Yeah. yeah. And I think an awful lot of, um, I run a networking group for women who run their own business. And it's funny when I kind of talk to them about using speaking as a, a way to grow their business, most of the women are kind of like, oh my goodness, public speaking, that is just my idea of hell. <laughs> uh, you know, it, I think it's the most common phobia that exists is public speaking and um and it yet is. and yet um you and i clearly both love it and it's my favorite thing to do of all i love coaching but i love speaking more than anything else and um i think you know if people can kind of find a way to make it work for them it's a really great way to grow your business through through those speaking engagements yeah it grows you too you yes. know and you had asked about the ebooks Sometimes I can be long-winded with my answers. Mm -hmm. I chose to create those so that information was targeted in one resource for people. Yes. So, um, and it's also, listen up, folks. It's Ebooks are great marketing tools. So I create this thing that is very affordable. It's $3.99. Yeah. You buy it for $3.99, I get 70% of that from Amazon. And you get some really good information. Yeah. Because I give step-by-step step how to find the documents you need, what it is you need to do. And then I wrote a second one, how to actually write a talk. And the value I get from those books, they weren't created, and this is great for coaches that have been thinking about it, they weren't created to make me a bestseller, they were created as a marketing tool. Yeah. And within those marketing tools are links to the study course that you have, and um, links to my other books. So it's as far as content marketing, marketing in my opinion that's a gentle way to say hi this is what i do take a look yeah absolutely and it's really it's i think an ebook is a really it's a great tool for people to be able to really cut corners because you can kind of 
you know, especially with, with the, uh, the world we live in, you can find out all of this information um, <clears throat> by searching for it. But it saves so much time to find a resource that's step by step. Here's what to do in this order. And here's the links and everything that's just so incredibly useful and time saving. So, yeah. Um, well, the process to find speaking opportunities is a pain in the butt. Yeah. And you have to be willing to do it. There's a lot of work to it. And now when I work with people, they learn immediately what it looks like. Yes. Uh, right from jump, this is what it's going to look like. This is what you have to be willing to do. A lot of people ask, ask me about bureaus. Bureaus are great, but there's a time to plug them in. And by the time you take advantage and invest in a bureau, you should already be a more seasoned speaker and have been referred by another seasoned speaker. Okay. That's when companies will really start looking at you. Yeah. But we're talking about the space where um, you, you want to get out there and get paid. You have to start doing the work. You can't, don't throw yourself, in my opinion, don't throw yourself in a bureau from the beginning. No one will choose you yes. because you're so new. You need to have, you know, events behind you. So I teach you how to do it yourself. And yes. that's, I mean, there are so many speakers. I was talking to um, a very well-known speaker. I did a coaching session with him and he's, he's now asked to be on the stages he gets paid very very well between four and seven thousand for a talk and uh you know he still does the work to find them himself okay you know he'll farm out some of the work like he'll have someone um go through the college websites and get the and scrape the information yeah but for the most part that's how he gets paid mm -hmm. that's how a lot of speakers do they do it themselves yeah it is a lot of work and i think people you're right um, new coaches that I've met, they they assume that people will just be coming looking for them, and that really doesn't happen. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. The process I'm doing now, I'm on a journey, and I encourage other speakers to follow me because I'm forging the path for you. Yeah. And then I'm going to turn around and give you the answer. Well, this is what happens when you try this, and this is what happens yes. when you try that. Because I'm very, um, I do this every day. There's something I do every single day to get into a room, and part of it is I collect, and it takes about an hour. So five to seven colleges, mm -hmm. and I collect the head of the um, advisory boards and the student life, the director of student life, the director of the career development centers. Okay. Because I can target them in two ways. The career development centers, I can target and say, hey, I do training. Yeah. I come in to, because that's part of my business. Mm -hmm. And then the other side is, Students all over campus, they always are in need of speakers. Yeah. So I'm targeting the student life to say, hey, and my first hit is an email with no attachments. What is in the email is a link that says click here. And when you click on that, it brings the organizer to a beautiful PDF that gives them in two pages. So it's quick and concise and pretty to look at where I've spoken, what I can do for them, and a, a link to my video. Yeah. That took me weeks to put together. Sure. You know, and that, so that's what I'm talking about. You have to be willing to do these things. Yeah. Um, and you learn as you crawl and grow. You learn what you have to do. You just can't reach out to somebody and expect them to, to come back to you. I'm going to have to target these colleges several times. Yeah. This was just my first touch. Yes. I mean, you certainly have to be... Um, <clears throat> you have to be good at persevering in this industry. <laughs> it's, uh, yes. as you say, it takes, takes a long time for these connections to actually come to any fruition. And um, you've just got to be really tough during that time and <laughs> persevere with it. So do you have any advice um, for a busy mom who's looking to use speaking as part of her, um, of her income um, for a, maybe a small business or entrepreneurial venture? Yeah, just, first of all, just do it. Yeah. Whatever whatever excuses pop up or you whine about in your head, get over it. Um, and I know that sounds harsh, but I've coached a lot of people, and the first thing you've got to get through is being responsible for yourself. So mm -hmm. if a busy mom is going to say, well, I've got this and I'm too busy and I can't make it work, frankly, you don't want it bad enough. Yeah. Because it's going to take work. You're not going to be able, you've, it's not, you don't just pick up the phone and you're in a room. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure there's people out there that are ready to put you in a room now. Great. You still, if you want to be a speaker, have to generate those um, 
I was going to say propositions, but those possible prospects, those organizations that need you, you got to feel them. Yeah. You got to show up for them. Less than 3% of the people that start down this journey will, will complete it. You see, I have a goal. My goal is to get paid as a keynote $10,000 or more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about a training, I'm talking about on a stage as a keynote. Yeah. And what I see is people who get 10,000 or more, they're one of three things. They're either a celebrity, mm -hmm. right? They're either someone who has overcome great adversity. Who's the guy who landed the plane in the water? No, please don't bark, no. <laughs> Go, quick, hang on. <laughs> um, the guy that landed the plane in the water, Scully. Yeah. He, he, because of that story, he made national headlines and he became a person of interest. Mm. And so he'll be pulled into rooms for that, that 10 K or more. Or the third option is similar to what you were saying earlier. You have to be an expert in your field. Yeah. So either you get cast with Angelina Jolie tomorrow and now you're a sensation <laughs> or, you know, you face some adversity and it's not always pleasant. Yeah. You know, people overcome Elizabeth Smart. In the U.S. and Utah, what, 14 years ago I was abducted? I don't even know. Yeah. I, heard her, I heard her speak um, last year. Yes. You know, so those are the three routes you've got to take. So if you want to be a speaker and you want to get paid that kind of money, and that's what I want to do, yeah. you have to continue to show up every day. You have to choose to do something every day, even if it's a little something, even if it's just going on five college websites. Yeah. And getting their address and putting them in a folder and saying, tomorrow I'll do five more. The day after that, I'll do five more. And then the next thing you know, you have populated a hundred names, emails, and phone numbers that you're going to send your calling card to, your yeah. one sheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a great strategy. So um, you recently rebranded your business. Um, and we've talked a little bit about, about why you changed. So how have you found that transition? Because I know a lot of... <laughs> A lot of people, um, and I've transitioned several times since I started my business. I started out as a neurofeedback therapist, and then I decided that I wanted to do coaching, and then I was an author, and um, now I'm doing a bit of medical writing. How do you kind of weather that change? And I have a personal question for you. Did you do that slowly, or did you just make a big jump? You will always do it slowly and okay. it will never, ever. The, the, to answer the first part of your question, how do you do it? You decide right from the jump that that's how it's always going to be. Yeah. It will always be like that. There, are, there will be ups, there will be downs, there will be goods, there will be bads. You will think you have arrived and then you will want more. Yeah. So for me, I think it was, it did happen slowly because it took me a long time to recognize it was the journey. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's what I'm supposed to be doing that's going to add to what I want to be doing. Yes. And we all want everything so quickly. So really challenge yourself and tell yourself every day, this is the most unpredictable ride. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know? So, for example, just a leg off of this, I still freelance right for a business magazine. And I get paid for that. And there have been times where that's all I've had. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. it's okay to dip your hands in those other things. And the only person that's going to tell you it's not okay is you. Because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people outside of you saying, well, mm -hmm. you can't be this and then that. And then, oh, and now you want to do this. You can't do that. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. You, you can do whatever you want as long as it's for the greater good. Yeah. And it's serving people. Mm -hmm. You do whatever you want. Yeah. That's great advice and uh, very reassuring to me. <laughs> um, so um, I wanted to ask you about, uh, about your training with Tony Robbins and because um, I also did the, the Tony Robbins training. What did you learn most from, uh, from doing the strategic intervention coaching? Did you see Tony live um, during that process? First of all, um, that's... For those of us, for people watching, that's how we didn't even know we were, we had the same coaching certification. Yeah. We met at a conference last year and we're like, oh, you're a Tony Robbins coach too? Yeah. Uh, I did see him live. I saw him live just after I was certified. So that was in 2012. Mm -hmm. And it was a rush. 
you know, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced. That's all I can say. Just go just to see, just have an experience. Yes. Whatever it is, it is. Um, the coaching, I still use, oh, I'm looking at the certifications on my wallet. <laughs> yes. I still use them in my work that yes. I always have. Yeah. You know, it, it, came in, it works so good in um, business coaching. Mm. And it's even, you know, it's there with the speaker training too. You know, there's so much yeah. that that training gave me. Yes. So Jolene, I know you have a 12 year old. Um, how do you balance running this amazing business with being a mother and running a home, I assume? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my office is upstairs, which yeah. is probably dangerous because the washer and dryer mm -hmm. are over here. Mm-hmm. Um, if I could just, I could show you the other side of my office. Can you see the couch? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I can't cause I can't watch on you. Oh, part of my messy desk. Um, that's where my daughter sits every day after she comes home from swimming. She's yeah. on the swim team. Okay. And that's homework. And my daughter is blowing my mind every day. She is the most beautiful, mature, amazing 12 year old young lady. And I am so proud of her. She's, I think she's easy, but I, she's also 12 going into 13. <laughs> I hear a lot of things about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's getting that edge. She's coming into her own, and it's yeah. a beautiful thing to watch. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, well, thank you so much for all of that great advice. And um, I'd love you to tell us a little bit about how the viewers and listeners can get in touch with you. And if you could just tell us again, again the names of the ebook so that we can kind of check that out. On Amazon. Um, I love that actually. And I can even show you what they look like because I'm pretty sure I have a picture on my very organized desk. <laughs> but you can go directly to um, jolienemoody.com and I'm everywhere beyond that. And uh, there's three E's in my name. So it's J O L double -E, e, N like Nancy E, and then Moody like miserable, although I'm all right <laughs> today. Um, but you can go to the site and there's a tab called Goods and Books. Okay. That's and cool. under there is everything you can need. The ebooks, my first book, some study courses. Oh, a video. Mm -hmm. This is my newest thing is I made a video. Oh, cool. Called Take Your Voice Back. And I had a former news anchor interview me. Oh. And this is like an hour of, it's almost like my interview with Oprah like if I were to this is what I would want it to be like you know what I mean yeah I don't know what's gonna happen, so I have to create it first yeah so yeah I had an anchor mm -hmm. local anchor interview me and it, it turned out so great that's cool yeah yeah that's great well thank you so much for your wonderful advice today Jolene and thank you so much for watching the show if you'd like to watch more episodes of the busy mum show head on over to thebusymumshow.com thanks so much for watching Bye for now and have a fabulous day.